Good morning, family. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your bro, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And you're listening or watching to the Morning Devo right now. Watching the Morning Devo. I said watching too, right? Um, that was an extra word that should not be said, right? It doesn't sound right. But you know what I mean. You're here with us on the Morning Devo. I try to do these Mondays through Fridays, 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Right here at SoulWinnersWithAZ.org. Also at Live.SoulWinnersWithAZ.org. Where is the quietest website ever. We have your chat live chat. You have a Bible, interactive Bible. Amen. Um, you have the live and you have um, other things that you can connect to to the ministry from there as well. But it's real like low key, calm down. Amen. Um, not a lot of pop ups, none of that stuff. I made sure I had it. I made it that way. It's like a, I call it like the library of soul winners. Amen. Um, so that way you could really get um, the information um, kind of like distraction free. So that way, you know, that you could really key in on the word of God. Today, we're going to talk about mind control, mind control. And of course, um, this was inspired by Holy Spirit God through watching Star Trek, of all things, right? I was watching Star Trek episodes, the old school ones, the original series, um, Captain Kirk, Dr. Spock, you know, um, you know, Bones, which is the doctor, and... A lot of times it deals with a lot of mind manipulation, amen. And while I was looking at that, Holy Spirit God, of all of all places, of all things, Holy Spirit God was talking to me about this whole mind control idea, amen. And how in the Word it talks about mind control. And you might be thinking, what are you talking about? Hypnotizing people or manipulating people? Not really, amen. Um, but on today's morning Devo, we're gonna let me make sure. Audio is good. We're going to make sure um, we know what the word says about mind control, or at least a place, one place that I know of right now that we could speak of. I have some other scriptures too, but today we're going to be in Ephesians chapter number four, verses 22 to 23, or maybe actually it's from 22 to 24, Ephesians chapter four. And there is a battle being fought. For control of our minds. How many people believe that? There's a battle right now on social media platforms, right? In the community, in organizations, in some manipul- manipulative churches, um, some places where there's a battle being fought for our minds. It's crazy. If you give somebody control, right, over your mind, and if it ain't God, run. You're in trouble. Ask God to help you get out of that type of mind control. If your mind is not being controlled by Holy Spirit God, and it's being controlled by someone else, amen, be careful. That's what I'm saying. It's a warning. Mind control to the end of morning devil. We're going to make sure our mind is right. Amen. When we stay focused on the word of God and on the the love of God, the mercy of God, then we're focusing on the right things. If we're focusing on worrying, anxiety, depression, um, demons, demonic attacks, um, then we have to be careful because right now there's a battle for control. There's a battle right now going on in the spiritual realm. We might not see with our bare eyes, but we could sense it. We know it. We could feel it. That something or someone is trying to control our mind. I submit my mind, my soul, my ideas, my body, physically, emotionally, and spiritually to the Lord. Other people say, that's crazy. You can't do that. You shouldn't do that. You're a slave. Yeah, I'm a slave to righteousness. I'm a slave to holiness. I'm a slave to the freedom of Christ. What about you? Mind control today in the morning Devo. Sister Joanne, I see you. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome back to the morning Devo. So let's do this. Let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. Uh, and then we'll get right back into what we're going in Ephesians chapter. What did I say? Ephesians 4 verses 22 to 23. And we'll probably extend that to verse 24 as well. Amen. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, Anytime during this live, even if I'm not live, 
from the time that you're watching or listening. Amen. If something hits your heart, you have a question, comment, you have to speak on something, you have to ask a question, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat from whatever platform you're listening to um, the podcast. Amen. You could also do it there. There should be a way to connect with me. Also on the website, there's always a contact form where you could contact me right there on the website. So let's pray. Father, Lord Jesus, thank you, Father, for who you are, what you've done to our minds. You have changed our minds, not forcefully, but because of your mercy and your grace and your love. You have changed our ideas. You have changed our mind, transformed our hearts. And now we think about life. We no longer are captive to the flesh. We're no longer under the law that leads to death. We are in your will. Thank you, Lord God, that we have a purpose. Thank you, Lord God, that we have a a way of escape when we're tempted to do things other than what you want us to do. Thank you, Lord God, that you are working a great work through us, in us, and that we can speak your word to others, and it will also bless our lives as we do that. I pray, Lord God, that every single person, including myself, that you will protect us from the evil one, protect us from protect us from harm. Thank you, Lord God, for doing that. Thank you for giving strength to our body, health to our body, strength to our bones. I pray, Lord God, that you will continually show us who you are through your word, through your people, that we will be lovers, not haters, and that we will love one another. But most importantly, we will love you first because we know what love is because you have loved us first and showed up in our hearts and our minds and in our lives personally, individually. And we can give you glory, honor, worship, and praise for it all. I ask, Lord God, that you help us guard our heart and guard our minds. And that whatever weapon or whatever person or whatever thing that's coming against us and the way we think, that you will help us through it. That, Lord God, that you would dispatch your angels to really annihilate the attacks on the enemy over our minds. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith, under the authority and the power of your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So let's go for it. 60 seconds to help me share this out. If you know somebody right now that's not on social media platforms like that, you could always share the link live that's so winners with a Z dot org. Or simply send them to soulwinnerswithaz.org. Tell them just to press play. Or they can look for the live stream from the website when we're live. And when we're not live, amen, they can still um, go to the website, Sell Our Radio Network, amen, and they'll find something that they're going to like, amen, including the music. So I'll be right back. Amen. Sharing that out to so many people, man. Woo. That's a lot. 
um, in that 60 seconds. But I'm going to leave it that way because I want us to all of, always feel the urgency to share this out, the gospel message of the Lord Jesus, the Word of God. We should be urgent to send that out to people that we love and people that we know never heard this message or they're they're kind of like in the dark about what the light brings and the light of Christ is a blazing light. So we should be um, always ready and willing to share. Amen. That's why I keep it down to 60 seconds. Mind control. Let's go for it um, and see what the Lord has for us today concerning this. Amen. Um, yeah, let's go for it. Amen. And of course, there's no manipulation here. Amen. I'm not smart enough to manipulate people. But God, he's so holy. He's so loving, kind and kind to us that he knows um, that there's a war being fought for our minds. And if we just trust him, simply put our faith, hope and trust in him. Yes, this. Yeah, of course, you're going to have questions of how that works. Of course, you could have questions of of who God is and why God would do this and why God would do that. You know, it's normal for us to have questions about a holy, righteous, loving God, an amazing God, an almighty God, an all-knowing God. And people say, oh, you can't question God. But that's an indication to me that the mind is under control of someone else because they're not reading the scriptures. Prophets, The prophets ask questions. Adam and Eve asked questions. Um, everybody pretty much that was mentioned had some kind of question about life, about God, about family, about what to do. Amen. So this whole thing that, oh, no, you shouldn't question God is kind of like saying that you can't be in a relationship with a loving God. And that's not true. If you're a believer in Christ, you know that we can and we do have a relationship with the living, holy, righteous God, the true God. And we could ask questions. He's he's ready for our questions. He won't be shocked by a question. You won't get punished for asking the questions. Amen. God's a loving, all-knowing God. He knows our hearts and he knows our minds. And there's a fight and a war for our minds right now as we speak. So let's get into it. Mind control. Amen. Go for it here. The Word of God says, I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 4, starting from verse 22. And we're going to go all the way to 24. That, whatever that is, that way you know if it starts with that, we're talking about something, continuing to talk about an idea that the apostle is talking about. That's why I always tell people to read the whole chapter. But let's pick it up from 22. That regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self, completely discard your former nature, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude. I love it. And put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature created in God's image, God-like, in the righteousness and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. Man, this thing has so much. This word right here. These scriptures have, have so much that I could write a book on that. Are you kidding me? You heard the expression, people say you have to die to self. No, you have to live in Christ. God didn't die for us, for us to kill ourselves. Amen. People go overboard by saying you have to die to yourself. No, you have to deny yourself. Amen. Deny what? Your old self. Put off your old self. Completely discard your former nature because now we have a divine nature, a new nature in Christ Jesus. Have you noticed that? When you gave your life to the Lord, you feel brand new. You're a new creature. You have a divine nature now. The old self can't control you no more. The old self can't control your mind, soul, your body. 
Sin can't be your master anymore once you have a new master, which is King Jesus. Discard your former nature. Be done with it. Amen? No, you're not killing yourself. You're denying your old nature. You're denying your old self. Amen? And be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind. Right? Because you know there's a battle for your mind, so be renewed continually in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished, mental and spiritual attitude. Put on a new self. I don't know why anybody wants to live in the old self any longer. I know it might be comfortable there. It might be familiar there. Amen? But you don't belong there anymore. Wherever that there is, you don't belong there anymore. The old things used to do. Man, I remember I used to do this. I remember I do that. Through my testimony, I always speak about who I used to be because for whatever reason, some people who meet me, it's because of the glory of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God in my life. A lot of people literally think that I was raised in the church. They think I've been brainwashed by the church all my life. And then when I trust them, they're looking at me like, um, capping. So I'm not capping. This is true. This is my former way of living. I'm telling people about my former way of living so that really they could compare it with the new way of life that I'm living. Amen? And people look at that. Some people believe me. Some people don't. But it's a battle being fought for the hearts of men and women, for the minds of men and women. Haven't you noticed how social media is geared um, to mind control over our children, over the young people, over young adults and teens? Amen? And if we're not careful as adults, older and more experienced human beings, we could be manipulated into this mind control and social media. They've studied, they threw a lot of money on trying to control our minds. But God shows up, amen, for free in our lives. And he says what he says, and he speaks over our hearts and over our minds, and he renews our mind, restores um, the right way of thinking to our mental create something new in our hearts and new in our minds so we don't have to be like victims and victimized to the weaponized part of social media through advertising through images colors all that stuff messes around with our psyche you don't believe me ask somebody ask somebody who knows more about that than I do amen and people who have studied psychology or have degrees in that they could tell you colors are a trigger Phrases are a trigger. Motion on film and on video is a trigger. Um, there's always something behind something trying to take control. God shows up in a non-manipulative way. He shows up free in your heart and your mind. He doesn't have to use colors. He can, but he doesn't have to. He goes straight directly to our heart. It speaks to our soul. It speaks to the spirit, amen, um, that he knows about. He created us. And he'll speak life. Never speaks death. He speaks truth. Never speaks lies. Amen. And he's not into forcing us to follow him. He's into loving us into the path of righteousness. That we will follow him because he's worth following. We can trust in him because he is trustworthy. We can love on him because he's the lover of our soul. Amen. So, He knows there's a war for our mind. We should know there's a war for our mind. And the battle that's being fought, amen, is the good fight of faith. It's worth the fight, amen. There's a battle for for control of our minds. Here's some questions that people say, oh, you can't ask questions. You can't ask God any questions. So why did the psalmist in Psalm chapter 13, verse 2, ask these questions? No, mind control deals with a lot of manipulation. And if you don't know something and somebody knows that you don't know something, they might speak of something about the scriptures or try to teach you something about the scriptures that are just not there. They're just trying to gain your attention, maybe gain notoriety in your life, or maybe persuade you to give into their ministry or give to their church because of your lack of knowledge and my lack of knowledge. And once we dive into the scriptures for ourselves, no one will be able to do that to us any longer. As, as a matter of fact, if you're born again, if you gave your life to the Lord, you have Holy Spirit God living inside of you, that if you listen closely, amen, he'll give you discernment 
of what's true and what's not true. If that's in the scriptures or if that's not in the scriptures. Psalms 13, 2, the psalmist says, how, or he asks, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? That's a question that he's asking God. How long will my enemy triumph over me? You ever been in a place where like, man, the enemy is really, really wreaking havoc and he's going all out to try to snatch me out, to get me out of here, to get me off balance. He's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the job of the enemy. And you might be asking God, how long will my enemy triumph over me? You notice that when you're going through something, God is right there. That's why you start asking questions to God. You could ask me the question. You could ask your friends a question, your family a question. Um, and they might have some kind of an answer. But if they're inspired by Holy Spirit, they will give you an answer. But that answer inspired by Holy Spirit will be from God. Amen. So be careful when people say, oh, you can't question God. Um, I don't know where they get that from. Uh, I want to think it's probably traditional teachings um, from churches, denominations, or this whole fear of God that you can't approach God um, completely goes away. When the Bible says that we could go in boldly to the throne room of grace, we could go boldly to God with questions, with our burdens, with our sorrows, with our anger, without, you know, we have a relationship with God. So I don't know why people say we can't question God when we see it all through the scriptures. Disciples question God, the apostles question God. Um, the prophets question God. Amen. The psalmist question God. Um, Solomon question God. I mean, like, it's crazy, man, how people say we can't do that. Only the people in the Bible could do that. That's um, a form of mind manipulation, a form of mind control because of lack of understanding or lack of knowledge. Or maybe it could be just laziness. We're, we're not reading the scriptures for ourselves, so, rely, so we rely on other people to feed us the scripture without feeding ourselves. If I relied on somebody else to feed me right now when I have the ability to feed myself, a lot of people will be like, listen, man, go go make your own food. Go feed yourself. I don't have time for that. But God always has time to feed us. He always has time to nourish our body, soul, mind, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So you can go to God with questions. You can go to God with your anger, with your with your anxiety, with your depression, whatever is trying to take over your mindset. To go to the one who wants to give us a clear mindset and a godly mindset. Go to God. Right? Second Corinthians chapter ten, verses three to five. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. As believers, we don't go eye for an eye. We know we don't do that. The weapons we fight with as believers are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive, here goes the mind, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So we have a way of mind control to control our own thoughts. We take those thoughts that are crazy. You ever had some crazy thoughts? If you would see my thought life sometimes, you'd be like, you're right, Sam? Are you a believer? (laughs) Because these things that come out of the air, that come out of nowhere, and it goes into your mind, you'd be like, I got to get that mindset out. I had to get that thought out. I got to bring that to the obedience of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Because if you keep on pondering on certain thoughts, your thought process is will cause you to do something about those thoughts. And a lot of times, if they're bad thoughts, um, they're going to cause consequences and will do damage to your walk spiritually. Careful. Second Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5. Could be something to study out, something to pray out, amen, and something to know about. That we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive, right? This sounds like we're moving 
and victory. It sounds like we're at war. It sounds like we're in a battle, right? And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That's how we move. That's how we roll. That's how we should be moving. Amen. No mind manipulation. No arguments of of this, that, and the third. You know, I had a, a ride um, yesterday and I met a, a lady uh, that had different viewpoints of the world than I did. And instead of me arguing, I just listened. Amen. Um, people believe what they believe for reasons. Amen. But because it was a ride and it was a stranger I had just met, I used courtesy as my weapon. I used listening as my weapon, not arguments. Amen. And, you know, what she represents is different than what I represent. What she believes is different than what I believe. Amen. But we could still have a communication. We could still communicate without arguing. Now she was talking about peace among people. I'm right up that alley. Peace among people. But my Bible says, Bless are the peacemakers that be us as believers. Amen. And if we don't know how to keep peace first with God, we won't know how to keep peace with one another. Amen. And there's a lot more there. But there is a battle fought for control of our mind. Amen. So if you ever thought that you were alone in this battlefield for your mind, amen, uh, let me just remind you that you're not alone. You are never alone when it comes to the battlefield. Get back to that scripture again to make sure I'll tell you what to read today, what you can read today. Amen. And we were in Ephesians 4, chapter 4. Read the whole chapter for yourself. I'm out of time, but amen, there's so much here. So I'll probably continue down this line of thought and through these scriptures. Amen. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I pray, Lord, that the Lord will continue to renew your mind and strengthen you and give you boldness um, to read his word and spread his word uh, throughout your community, throughout your family, wherever you go, there you have the word of God with you. Amen. Speak it. I bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.